Seconds away right here, a baby put through a security x-ray machine at L.A. International Airport, and it's freezing outside. How cold will it get? Eyewitness News begins in 60 seconds. The big chill grips Southern California tonight as the mercury plummets, and it isn't even winter yet. Good evening. I'm Michelle Tuzzi. I'm Mark Brown. This is Eyewitness News at 11. Put quite simply, it is freezing in some parts of the Southland tonight as Mother Nature gives us a chilly reception. Eyewitness News reporter Robert Olguin is live in the middle of all this cold weather in Lancaster where people are bundled up. Robert. You know, Mark, it is very very cold out tonight. Remarkably cold in the Antelope Valley. It's 24 degrees right now as we speak. And of course, one of the coldest nights of the year expected tonight. So this cold snap also happens to come on a night when a lot of people are doing Christmas shopping. Thankfully, you can do a lot of Christmas shopping indoors, but there are some things like Christmas trees that require you to do the shopping outdoors. It's easy to get into the Christmas spirit here in Lancaster. Christmas trees are being snapped up and everyone is yeah. bundled up. Definitely feeling like Christmas. I can't feel my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and the hot chocolate doesn't seem warm. Well, not everyone is bundled up. Now you're just wearing a sweatshirt. They, you know, I know, I'm cold. <laughs> I got something under this, but I should have on a coat, gloves, and everything. The plummeting temperatures tonight are enough to cut short any shopping trip. Cold, man. <laughs> it's time to go home to our heaters and our warm beds. <laughs> Even the smallest of shoppers are being chased off by the cold. You know, we shut the water off tonight to keep it from freezing. John Smith manages this Christmas tree lot. He's got a secret weapon hidden in the corner of his makeshift office. It doesn't help a whole lot, but it does help some. <laughs> At least those guys are moving. I'm standing still in here. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You know, you got to keep moving out here, you know? All right, you know it's cold when it's not even 9 o'clock and already standing water is starting to freeze. Oh, I'm feeling it. <laughs> Blowing the smoke breath and everything. Yeah, a little cold. <laughs> oh, boy, that is an understatement. It is cold. Again, 24 degrees out right now. You can see that number right over my shoulder. Temperatures expected to dip down into the teens tonight. Dallas will have the details coming up in weather. We are live in Lancaster tonight. Robert Olguin, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Michelle, back to you. Okay, Robert, thanks. Freezing temperatures and winter is still three days away. Are we in store for more cold weather? Here's Dallas. That's right, Michelle. Tonight, uh, temperatures dropping in the upper teens out in the Palmdale, Lancaster area. Agoura Hills already down to 36 tonight. Palmdale, 25. Claremont, you're at 37. There's a frost advisory from 2 a.m. this morning till 6 in the morning for 28 to 33 degree temperatures. Wow, what's going to happen for the holiday weekend? We will have the forecast in just a few minutes. I'll see you then. Thank you. All right. Hundreds of customers are still without power in the San Fernando Valley tonight after a tree fell on some power lines near Los Angeles Valley College on Burbank Boulevard. More than 2,500 homes in Van Nuys and Sherman Oaks were affected when the outage happened this afternoon. Tonight, 700 to 900 users are still without power. Police officers are controlling traffic at intersections where the signals are out. A disturbing story from LAX where a baby accidentally went into an x-ray machine at a security checkpoint last Saturday. According to the LA Times, a woman put her month-old grandson into a bin and then onto the conveyor belt. A TSA screener saw the baby in his x-ray scope. The infant was quickly removed and taken to the hospital. Doctors determined he did not receive a dangerous dose of radiation. Airport officials are calling it an innocent mistake by an inexperienced traveler. Over-the-counter pain relievers are used by millions of Americans. They're among the most common medications and generally are considered safe. But now the government says they should have warning labels. Eyewitness News reporter Elsa Ramon tells us why. She's live in Northridge. Elsa? Well, Michelle, doctors say they are safe if you read the labels and follow the directions, but they're saying people aren't doing that with their over-the-counter pain medications, and they're seeing more and more organ damage and even death. In just one week, UCLA Medical Center treated five women who overdosed on the acetaminophen in Tylenol. Four of those women needed immediate liver transplants. Most people view Tylenol as a medication that you can kind of take and it'll solve your problems with your headache and your back aches, and they have no concept of the possible toxicity that the drug has. In fact, misuse of acetaminophen is now the number one cause of liver failure in this country. Northridge Medical Center Dr. Dan oh, Kitchener says people don't always read the labels or they don't realize how much they're taking. You may be taking it in a pain medicine, but in addition, you may have a cold and 
and may not notice that it's one of the ingredients in the cold medicine. So you have to look at the ingredients. For years, doctors have known all of these over-the-counter drugs can cause serious organ damage if used improperly. The Food and Drug Administration now wants more warnings on labels. It's going to make sure that the name of the drug is very prominent and that it's very, very clear, more clear than it is now. So the FDA is proposing that acetaminophen carry a warning letter or label rather that says it can cause liver damage and also proposing that anti-inflammatory drugs, a label should warn of the possible, uh, a possibility rather of stomach bleeding or kidney damage. Reporting live in Northridge, Elsa Ramon, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Mark, back to you in the studio. Okay, Elsa, thank you. The father of a murder victim is suing O.J. Simpson to try to collect $38 million in a wrongful death lawsuit. Fred Goldman, the father of Ron Goldman, filed the suit. He says yeah. Simpson was paid more than a million dollars for his now canceled book, If I Did It. And tonight on The Larry King Show, Goldman said he wants to haul Simpson into court to force him to pay up. We'll do everything we can for the rest of time to make his life miserable and make him pay in some form. He has never, ever been held responsible for his violent acts, ever. Last month, a Santa Monica judge rejected Goldman's attempt to control the rights to Simpson's name and celebrity image. William Famatre, the embattled L.A. fire chief, was given a hero's farewell today, two weeks before he retires. The ceremony was held in front of City Hall. Famatre is stepping down after a 31-year career in response to allegations of discrimination and harassment within his department. Chief saluted his firefighters at his uh, farewell ceremony. A huge reversal by President Bush on the situation in Iraq. Eyewitness News continues in 60 seconds. Plus, a man buried alive in an avalanche. You'll hear his incredible story of survival. And another story of survival. A boy falls into a hole trapped for days. We'll tell you what he ate in that hole that kept him alive. Plus, the Donald gives Miss USA a second chance. How a young beauty queen almost lost her crown. <laughs> See all the wonderful toys at the Mercedes-Benz Winter Event, now through January 2nd, with a special lease offer on the ML350, an insurance institute for highway safety's top safety pick. There's never been a better time to get that Mercedes-Benz on your wish list. A dramatic story of survival as an avalanche buries a man riding a snowmobile in the mountains of Wyoming. Greg Huntsman and his brother were testing out their sleds when the avalanche struck without warning last Saturday. And, and I couldn't even move. I mean, as soon as it piled on top of me, it was just like being cast in concrete, like they always tell you. The only thing I could do is just move a little bit, you know, my body so that I could have room to breathe. Greg's brother and his friends were nearby. They began a frantic search and dug him out of eight feet of snow just in time. He was turning purple and didn't appear to be breathing, but he quickly recovered. The same is not true for one of their friends who died in the same avalanche. Another story of survival from Brazil, where a young boy was rescued after eight days inside of a hole. The eight-year-old said he was on his way to a friend's house when he fell into the hole, landing on his back. He said he survived by eating plants, dirt, and rainwater. He was discovered by a local businessman. He's now being treated for cuts, bruises, and exhaustion. For the first time, President Bush says America is not winning the war in Iraq. In an interview with the Washington Post, Mr. Bush said he agreed with a Pentagon assessment that we are neither winning nor losing the war. The president said he intends to expand the size of the U.S. military, which is stretched too thin by the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm inclined to believe that we do need to increase our troops, the Army and the Marines. Bush says he asked Defense Secretary Robert Gates for a recommendation on how to build up the military. He did not say how many troops might be added. A sizable increase could take years and wouldn't have an immediate impact on the war in Iraq. She's the reigning Miss USA, but this beauty queen finds herself in an ugly situation. And now one of the nation's wealthiest celebrities talks about the bad choices made by a woman who was considered to, by some to be a role model. Hi everyone, I'm Dallas Range. Will this cold weather last through Christmas? We'll find out in just a few minutes. Rocky Balboa is getting back into the ring. I'm George Pinocchio, and tonight's Hollywood wrap, meet the real-life fighter that becomes his new nemesis. Plus, the Dancing with the Stars live stage tour debuts. We'll give you a peek before it comes to L.A. next.
Back tomorrow morning. Make the most of your mornings. Up to the minute breaking news. Also, make your cake and eat it too without gaining a pound. The secrets to making skinny sweets. Don't just start early, start smart. At 5 and 6 a.m. on ABC7. Introducing the meteorologist Dallas Rains has the seal of approval from the American Meteorological Society. Miss USA is keeping her crown. There was talk she might lose her title due to her partying lifestyle and underage drinking. But today, the co-owner of the pageant, Donald Trump, said she's not fired. Eyewitness News reporter Leslie Miller has reaction live from Studio City. Leslie? Michelle, proving he is still the Donald and not the Grinch. Donald Trump is letting Miss USA keep her crown. And not everybody thinks that this scandal will hurt Tara O'Connor's career. In fact, some people believe that all the publicity will actually raise her profile. Miss USA is headed to rehab, which really makes her no different than a slew of young celebutants, only she still gets to wear a crown. I've had a very big blessing bestowed upon me. And you'll never know how much I appreciate Mr. Trump for saving me on this one. Tara Connor was accused of some pretty serious illegal activity, underage drinking and cocaine use. She made some very, very bad choices. But pageant owner Donald Trump says the bite of the Big Apple is to blame. She left a small town in Kentucky, and she was telling me that she got caught up in the whirlwind that's New York, that we all know is New York. Miss USA is considered a role model, and her conduct must reflect that. Former Miss Oregon and Miss USA contestant Jennifer Murphy says she's surprised Tara was given another chance. I think the fact that she was given another chance shows a lot about Donald Trump. He has a heart, and he really sees her as, as the person, the human being that she is, and he wants to see her fly. Elliot Mintz is a publicist to the stars and an expert in crisis management. He says the Miss USA scandal may actually help Connor's future career. If she triumphs, if she comes out of this as a healthier, stronger, better person and good role model, she wins. Already, Connor is learning how to dodge the tough questions. I wouldn't say that I'm an alcoholic. I think that that would be pushing the envelope just a little. Tara Connor says she plans to walk out of rehab the best Miss USA ever. And America loves a good comeback story. And Donald Trump may be banking on that. Ratings for the Miss USA pageant have been falling for years. We're live in Studio City. Leslie Miller, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Mark Michelle, back to you. Okay, Leslie, thanks a lot. Everybody out there in the field tonight bundled up. <laughs> Leslie Miller, Robert And O'Gee. it's not even officially winter yet here in Southern California. We had last night, if you were with us at this time, we we're looking at some snow. The live Doppler 7,000 plus. Uh, Michelle and Mark, this was over around Las Vegas, and this is what it was like early this morning. It was cold out there in the desert. Uh, Beverly Hills tonight are seen for some beautiful Christmas lights, and this cold weather is going to last at least very close to Christmas. We'll warm up a little bit as we head into the holiday weekend. From 2 o'clock in the morning till 6 a.m., a frost advisory temperatures will drop from 28 to 33 degrees. We had a lot of frost this morning. We'll see some more tomorrow morning, too. And then I think that should be just about it. Live Doppler 7,000 plus tonight showing the storm that was over us last night. And Vegas has moved into Texas and New Mexico. Heavy snow falling out there this evening. Satellite view shows clear skies over us tonight. High pressure is the dominating weather feature. We have two lows. One tracking across New Mexico tonight, and the other one is out here to the northwest. And this one will move toward the Portland area, bring in some rain and some snow for extreme northern California by Thursday. If you're headed up to San Francisco, you'll have some rain up there on Thursday, not tomorrow. We'll have a lot of sunshine here in the Southland. Beautiful day tomorrow. Hit about 65 degrees for an afternoon high, so that's not bad, but it will start off really cold tomorrow morning with overnight lows in the 30s already. We're seeing that blizzard conditions tonight as that low moves over across Nebraska tomorrow. If you're headed toward Denver, look for big delays. Snow in 28. They've had a lot of snow on the mountain areas, the Rockies of Colorado, thunderstorms in the Mississippi Valley here on the West Coast. 50 degrees and uh, over in Vegas tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine there and some rain in the Pacific Northwest. But Southern California is looking good. Overnight lows tonight, real cold. You know that already. Mid-30s out in the valleys tomorrow. And up in the Antelope Valley, Palmdale, Lancaster starting out tomorrow morning about 17. 12 at Big Bear. Highs tomorrow will be on the cool side everywhere from San Bernardino 
back through the San Gabriel Valley. 65 at Pasadena, but a nice afternoon in Glendale and down on the coast at 62. Seven-day forecast, sunny and cool tomorrow, then a mild day by Thursday, and another front arrives on Friday. Some clouds with it, but I don't think we'll see any rain. And then by Christmas Eve, looks like a beautiful day. And Christmas Day right now, I'm forecasting mostly sunny and a high of 71. So it'll be a typical uh, Christmas Day for Southern California, but some very cold temperatures between now and then. Back to you guys. Okay, we'll bundle up, Dallas. Thanks. Right. In tonight's Hollywood Wrap, a look at the Dancing with the Stars live stage show. But first, the boxer who wants to knock out Rocky. Here's George Pinocchio to explain. George. A lot of people are talking about this movie. 60-year-old Sylvester Stallone says Rocky Balboa is the sixth and final Rocky movie. This time around, Rocky is offered the chance to fight the reigning heavyweight champion. That role is being played by former champ Antonio Tarver. It's already over. It comes to know it till it's over. What's that from, in the 80s? It's probably in the 70s. In Rocky Balboa, Sylvester Stallone's big screen alter ego takes on a new challenger, Mason the Line Dixon. Former light heavyweight champ Antonio Tarver plays the tough guy role, one Stallone wrote with Tarver in mind. The 38-year-old Rocky fan didn't have to think twice before accepting the challenge. It was great, man. It was a wonderful experience. I mean, I could have never dreamed about uh, working along a great actor and icon, for that matter, Sylvester Stallone, and um, I'm so thankful and grateful that he gave me an opportunity. Yo, ain't you a little scared? I don't get scared. Tarver is used to a tough training workout, and getting ready for Rocky Balboa was no exception. I had to work out. I had to look good. I didn't want, uh, you know, a 60-year-old guy to uh, show me up in the physique category. So, you know, I had to do my work. <laughs> it looks great. I mean, I can only hope I look that good at 60, have that energy and that type of life. It's unbelievable. Rocky Balboa is rated PG. It'll be in theaters tomorrow. Carrie Elways is ready for a new thrill, and that's tonight's Daily Variety Eyewitness News Preview. The star of Saw is now the star of the thriller Psych 9. The film involves an unstable woman, a recently closed hospital, and a string of murders. Shooting will begin in Prague by the end of the year. Finally, the Dancing with the Stars live tour kicked off tonight in San Diego. Here's a little Viennese waltz. Besides the group dancing, there are also couples-only moments, too. This one from Joey McIntyre and Kim Johnson. She danced with Jerry Springer this past season. Several familiar faces from seasons one, two, and three are taking part in the tour. It hits the Staples Center on December 28th. And I'm guessing if I'm working, I'm covering it. <laughs> <laughs> but you will be. <laughs> All right, George, thanks. Well, there is a shortage of toys needed for the Spark of Love toy drive, but you can help this Friday. Our resident elf, Garth Kemp, will be out there stuffing another bus full of toys at the Honda Center in Anaheim from 5 a.m. until 6.30 at night. We hope you can come down and drop off a toy. If you can't, you can also drop off a toy or sports equipment at your local fire station or CVS pharmacy. And if you'd like more information, you can go to our website, abc7.com. Well, these real small economy cars are very popular and they get great gas mileage, but are they safe to drive? A new report reveals if some of the smallest cars on the road pass the safe test. If you're driving one, you'll want to know how it rates. Plus, an unusual attack on a lawn snowman. It's caught on tape. We'll show you more. Season's greetings, everyone. This is Specialist Donna, Donna Ostell from Camp Virginia, Kuwait. Just wishing you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all my friends, family, and co-workers in Los Angeles, California. I love you and I miss you and I can't wait to see your beautiful faces real soon. It is my... Breaking news now in Malibu, Air 7 live now over a house fire. The address is 26122 Pacific Coast Highway. This is on the ocean side of PCH uh, near Coral Canyon Road. This is uh, north of Pepperdine and the colony. And uh, we're told it is a home. We're not sure yet uh, if there was anyone inside that home when it broke out. We're told that L.A. County fire is on the scene. So far, we don't have any reports of injuries. We're not sure how long that fire has been burning. Uh, but if we do get more information, we will bring that to you. 
Well, the price of gas is pushing sales of those small fuel-efficient cars way up, and now several of those cars have been put to the crash test. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety gave good ratings to three 2007 models, the Nissan Versa, the Toyota Yaris with optional side airbags, and the Honda Fit. The Hyundai Accent, Kia Rio, Scion XB, and Toyota Yaris without the side airbags received poor ratings. Overall, bigger is safer. Studies show driver death rates in those mini cars are two times higher than in midsize and large cars. For a complete look at the results of the crash tests, log on to our website at abc7.com. In Cincinnati, two men are caught on tape vandalizing a Christmas display. Using screwdrivers, the two men repeatedly slashed an inflatable Frosty the Snowman. Little did they know they were being videotaped. The same snowman had been slashed <coughs> twice before, so the homeowner decided to install a hidden camera to catch the perpetrators of the act. Police reviewed the tape and eventually arrested both suspects. Wow. Who would do that? Rob Fukuzaki is a preview of tonight's sports. Rob? Okay, thanks very much. Coming up, the bowl season kicks off in college football. The top-ranked Bruins continue their silly season while Kobe and the Lakers hit the road beginning in Chicago. The first of a long road trip. Highlights coming up. Would the threat of public humiliation scare you into losing weight? What if not losing meant you had to wear a bikini that's too small on national TV? I want you guys to turn the cameras off if anything pops out. <laughs> Got it? It's all about our basic instincts, Wednesday at 10. Last year here this week. Rob is here now with sports. Lakers on the road. That's right. A long road trip here, Michelle and Mark. The NBA season is nearly two months old, but the Lakers have played a league low seven games away from Staples. So here comes the payback. Time to pack the bags as Kobe and company kicked off a six-game, ten-day road tour in Chicago tonight. Lakers. Next up for Benny the Bull, dancing with the cows. Lakers took control early. Sasha Vujicic loads up, knocks down the three-pointer in an 11-0 run. Lakers by a half dozen at the break. The artist formerly known as number eight didn't paint a Picasso tonight. Friendly bounce, just two of his 19, and he found out down the stretch. Meantime, the Bulls took control late in the third quarter. First, Luol Deng drives paint, scores, and is fouled 23 points, 12 boards tonight. And you know, it's not the Lakers' night when a guy named Mike Sweetney comes off the bench, made a couple of huge plays inside. Look out below, the Lakers lose 94 89. The Bulls have won 12 of 13. Well, Saturday night's fight at the Garden led Commissioner Davis turn to suspend 10 players, including Carmelo Anthony. So that prompted the Nuggets to pull the trigger on the blockbuster trade. Four-time scoring champion Allen Iverson bolted Philadelphia for the Rocky Mountains. The Nuggets will have to give up a pair of first-round picks. Two players, including former Clipper Andre Miller, but Iverson's skills should be worth the price. Well, if Michigan this weekend represents the meaty part of the Bruins' non-conference schedule, then UCLA enjoyed a spicy light appetizer tonight. I ben Howland of the number one Bruins hosting mighty Sam Houston State. Early on, the Bearcats with some bite. Ryan Bright loads up from Barstow and trails a triple. The Bruins overcame a slow start with style. Cameroon's Alfred Aboya with a serious throwdown. UCLA by six to the break. The Bruins scored the first five points of the second half. And then James Keefe inside for the deuce and the foul. And a highlight from Westwood wouldn't be complete without Josh Shipp. He lays in two of his 18 points. And the Bruins down in Westwood are saying, we're still number one. We're 10-0. and And the Trojans also win her tonight over Long. The point settable game one of 31 this holiday season. Number 25 TCU had little trouble with Northern Illinois quarterback Jeff Ballard scrambles. Look at the effort to find the end zone. Ballard ran for three scores, threw another touchdown. The Horn Frogs win this one in a blowout 37 to 7. Main time in hockey, the Kings fell to Calgary by a score of 5 to 3. And that'll do in sports, Mark and Michelle. Okay, All thanks right. a lot, Rob. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. It's over. Ain't nothing over till it's over. Tomorrow, see the movie critics are calling a knockout. Newsweek raves it's inspiring. Two thumbs up. It's the surprise of the season. Rocky Balboa. Ready PG. It's the Sears Big 50% off sale. You've got just two days, this Wednesday and Thursday only, to save half off the season's hottest gifts. Save 50% off this Craftsman five-piece ratcheting wrench set, just $19.99 and 50% off robes and sleepwear for the family. Plus, save 50 to 60% off all outerwear in the store. The big 50% off sale. When it comes to great prices, this sale's got all the trimmings. Wednesday and Thursday only. Sears. 
safety of American tourists in Mexico. A closer look tomorrow at 5. Back to the scene of breaking news in Malibu. When last we saw this house, uh, it was uh, burning out of control. It appears the flames are still burning there, and this house, it appears, is a total loss. This is Malibu. This is 26122 Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, the call came in to L.A. County Fire at about 1048. There was a call for a second alarm shortly after that, but that second alarm was canceled. There are about 50 firefighters there. No word on whether anyone was injured. Uh, we'll try to have more on this tomorrow morning on Eyewitness News at 5 and 6 a.m. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. Tonight on Kimmel Lost, Matthew Fox reveals the truth about Santa. My daughter asks his daddy, is there really a Santa? She's also nine and a half, so I kind of came clean with her. I'm 39. Maybe you could tell me what the hell's going on on Lost. <laughs> Plus, Lawrence Taylor on an all-new Kimmel Late Night, only on ABC.